So I have a reputation in Bhutan which is a small Buddhist kingdom the size of Pennsylvania, which is between China and India. 750 citizens, everyone is related, news travels fast. English is the official medium of instruction in schools in Bhutan, English in the national language of Zonka, and I have never met a Bhutanese person who has perfected either language, <laughs> even English teachers. It's common to say things like, if you are hunger, fooding is in the next village, or you are very long, madam, or after a particularly bad dog bite, his leg is paining. So it's my theory that because spoken language is not the most reliable form of communication in Bhutan, that people have a highly developed sense of the unspoken, which can create problems for us literal Westerners who think we can say thank you with a sneer or I love you with a yawn and think we fooled someone. So emotional outbursts are considered the pinnacle of bad behavior in Bhutan. To show any passion uh, is for them, <laughs> um, yeah, I lost my space. <laughs> to show any kind of passion is, is you'd have to be completely drunk, which is not uncommon, or you'd have to be insane, which is nearly impossible to diagnose in a country with one psychiatrist for the entire population. <laughs> so it's not also that they're not, it's not that they don't have emotions, and it's certainly not that they're all happy, as many of you are to told to believe. Um, but it's just that in such a small country, everyone knows everyone, and everyone, it's good to keep your cards close to your chest. So, um, and also one of the four seals of Buddhism is that all emotions are suffering, and if you understand that on a superficial level, that might seem un-Buddhist to have emotions. So no one wants to seem un-Buddhist, no one wants to lose face. I've never been in a country where uh, social status is more important. These are the conditions I stepped into when I was hired as an assistant to a film producer to, on the first feature film to be shot in Bhutan. We'd gotten off to a very rough start, it was raining, it was cold, um, and I had to go to the airport every day and pick up the crew in batches. And every day I was also going to the airport to pick up our film canisters, which were late from LA. And every day, Drew Care would have an excuse why they were, had been offloaded in Bangkok. And every day, I had to contain, contain my emotions. And every day, I went back to the hotel where the, the cinematographer would <laughs> give me a fisheye and accuse me of having no competence. So, finally, one morning, the front desk clerk called to say that Drew Gare was on the phone for me. My shipment had arrived. I woke up a driver, I grabbed a monk in plain clothes, and I headed to the airport in a flatbed truck, and, we, and it got to the hold, and the pilot himself handed me the film. One canister of it. And the rest had been offloaded in Bangkok because Her Royal Highness had needed her space for her mangoes. So I said, thank you, but we really need the other 299 canisters. That's all I said. But my eyes said, idiot. <laughs> and he could hear it. He could feel my fury. I might as well have bared my breast and scorched his face with an exhalation of hot fire. <laughs> oh, said the pilot. She's an emotional. And he stepped back <laughs> uncomfortably. The monk practically threw me off the truck. And for the next 10 years, every time I've gone back to Bhutan, as I walk through customs, the friend of the sister of the cousin brother of the pilot stamps my password and says, you're an emotional. <laughs> I say yes, I'm an emotional idiot.